The Canyon Aeroad is one jaw-dropping bike. I had one for about four days before the Tour Down Under. I piled a whole bunch of kilometers onto it and it was amazing. It was crazy fast, shockingly comfortable, pretty well specced, and yes, very, very aero. Now there is a whole lot to cover with this bike, so for a full written review, head down to the link in the description to La Velo Cheetah. Everything is there. I'll just cover the basics in this video. And let's start with that frame. If you've never ridden an aero bike, they feel willing. They feel like they just want to keep rolling forward. And the Canyon Aeroad is very much like that. It just slices through the air completely effortlessly. But that shouldn't really be surprising. This is almost a pro spec bike. So of course it should feel fast. What is surprising is how comfortable it was. I've ridden endurance bikes that are only a little bit more comfortable than this thing. There's heaps of flex in the seat post, so you can see it moving side to side, and it will even tilt backwards just a little bit. Why not hear from a man who actually rides it professionally? Let's cut to a poorly lit interview with Nathan Haas. You know, I've had aero bikes in the past that are super fast and like I've always wanted the speed from the bike, but they never felt rideable for me and the the truth of the matter is when you have an aero bike it's very hard to actually control vibra vibration and impact shock coming vertically through the bike when you don't have a seat post that can actually flex backwards you know if you have a teardrop shape it can flex sideways but all yeah. the impact just goes straight up into the body and and i was getting back problems as soon as i was using an aero bike in the past so i always opted for the the road models but with the with the canyon it's been pretty awesome that they're, they're actually designed to be ergonomic and fast so the the actual ride is totally different to anything I've had in the past and I was even finding at the nationals on the weekend like I kept just going past guys even when they were pedaling I, you get that slingshot and the bike just keeps going and and you know if that's something that can make a difference in a race whether I've done less watts or in a sprint final I can just get that extra bit of speed to either hold on or, or to come past it's it could be the could be the big difference that I, <laughs> that could be the bit of luck that yeah I yeah yeah <laughs> Continuing with the theme is the wheel set. They are a set of DT Swiss Arc 1100 die cuts. They're 62 millimeters deep, a colossal 27 millimeters wide. They are fully tubeless ready, and they are very, very aerodynamic. Unfortunately, there's no getting around the fact that they will get caught in the wind. They are 62 millimeters deep, and as, even though they've been really well optimized, you will still get a bit of tugging around in high wind. But having said that, I've ridden shallower wheels that perform a lot worse in the wind, so they're pretty good. I would say surprisingly good for wheels of this depth. The group set was SRAM's ETAP HRD, so the Hydro Disc Wireless set. And it was my first experience with it, and I really, really liked it. The shifting system is very simple and intuitive. You have these gigantic paddles, only one of each on each side. It's a very simple and intuitive system. You kind of think about it, you press the paddle to get the chain to move that way. So to go into the higher speed gears, you hit the right paddle. To go into the climbing gears, you hit the left paddle. To change chain rings, you just hit both of them at the same time. I found it to be pretty quick, not quite as quick as a really well set up mechanical group set, but still pretty quick. So a big thumbs up on the shifting from the SRAM ETAP. Then there was the hydraulic disc brakes and they have a really good amount of modulation in them. So there's a very short throw to get the pad to make contact with the disc. And then you've got a, quite a good amount of feel to feed in and out sort of more braking depending on what you're doing. There was only one problem and I think I can hear it right now. Yes, that is the joyous sound of disc brakes that are kind of new. This bike was effectively pulled straight out of the box for me to ride, so I kind of experienced it as if I was the owner of the first few days, and the discs were pretty damn noisy. One thing I liked quite a lot more than I thought was the Canyon Integrated Cockpit. The one-piece Byron stem is going to be a bit of a pain in the ass to live with. There's no getting around that. You can't just chuck another stem in to change your fit, rotate the bars or anything like that. So it's not very practical to live with, but this combo is actually nice and comfortable. There's even a little bit of flex in them. Now, I'm not a very powerful guy, but even I was able to feel just a little bit of movement when I was out of the saddle and sort of thrashing it through the hills. It's actually not a problem, and I think it's a good thing because you can feel it just damping out vibrations a little bit when you're on rough roads. Moving to the saddle, and it's a Physique Arione. Physique Arione's are okay. 
Some people love them, a lot of people don't. That's fine. You know, it's a, it's a fine saddle for this spec bike. If you don't like it, chuck it off and put your own on there. That's what I would do. The tires are Continental GP Attack and Force, 23 mils at the front, 25 mils at the back. These tires are sold as a bit of a combination, so they're supposed to help with the aerodynamic optimization at the front end and give you a bit more grip and comfort at the back end. They feel a lot like GP4000s, which is a tire that I've used for many, many, many thousands of kilometers. And they're really good, as you'd expect from a bike that costs nine and a half thousand dollars. Let's talk weight. Canyon claims 7.2 kilograms for this size. Now I weighed it with two water bottle cages, a set of 105 carbon pedals, and a couple of small flashing lights. I kind of consider that like rolling weight, and I think that's a lot more sensible a metric than just sort of straight out of the box with absolutely nothing on it. That's how much it's gonna weigh when you're actually riding it. And that's pretty good. For an aero bike, there is a lot of carbon going on in this frame. It's got hydraulic electronic shifting as well. Nothing's really that oriented towards weight weenies. The bike actually feels surprisingly good in the hills, which is where I spent most of my time testing it. Once you get up into the really steep gradients, there's no escaping the fact that you will be slower than if you were on like a 6.8 kilo ultralight climbing bike. But for a bike that's set up like this, it was surprisingly good in the hills and uh, it wouldn't hold me back from buying one. Once you're down in the flats, the bike just rolls so incredibly well. It just has this willing sensation to it. You just spin it up and you just can feel that it wants to keep going. It just does not ever want to slow down. So on balance, the Canyon Aeroad CF SLX 9 disc is absolutely fantastic. This is one of the best bikes I've ever ridden. It's just such an impressive overall package. It is so fast, it is surprisingly comfortable, and it is really well specced for the price. Just do some Google searching on what these components cost to buy individually, and 9500 Australian dollars is actually pretty damn good. And hey, if it's good enough for Nathan Haas, it is more than good enough for me and probably more than good enough for you. Well, there you have it, guys. That is my review of the Canyon Aeroad, blah, 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 numbers and letters. If you want to read more, head on into the description below to check my review on La Velo Cheetah. Tell me what you think of the Canyon Aeroad. Do you want one? Would you buy one? Do you think they're awesome? Do you think they're fugly? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and all that sort of jazz. Thanks for coming. See you next time.